Today I'm showing you how to use the app Claro PDF. To start with, I touch the app. First, I'd like to go over all the icons on the page and then go more in depth about them after. If we start in the top left hand corner where we see the file folder, that is where we open documents. Beside that is the pencil, and that's where we annotate our PDF document. Next to that, we have the gear, which is our settings and store. In the middle of the page, we can see that we have the title of this PDF document. Further over in the right corner, we see the book. If we click that, that's our bookmarks or annotations we've made in our PDF. Next to that, we have the Save button, and beside that, we have the Export button. Now, if we look down at the bottom part of our page, we see the magnifying glass. If we click on the magnifying glass, we can search the document for a specific word. Beside that, we have where we are in this document, so we are on page 4 of 20. Going along, we have the page back button. So if I click that, it sends me back in the book. Next, I have the play button. So if I tap my screen, I'm going to have the text read aloud. I have tried to explain to him that my instincts are not the same as his. It didn't even enter my mind to give my seat to the candor man on the bus, buddy. And then I hit the stop button to stop the text reading aloud. Beside that is the page forward button. And I can also scroll through my pages by just swiping them with my finger as well, back and forth. Next we have the multimedia button. If I click that, this is where we can add audio or videos to our PDF document. Lastly in the corner, shows all the pages in our document. Okay, let's go back up into that left-hand corner and look at the options for opening documents. First, you can open up a PDF document that you already have saved in Claro. And they're all there on the side. You can also open up a document from Dropbox. If I go into Ykeen's folder and then it opens up what document was in that folder. You can also open from a web page. This links you right to the internet. And here I have an article on volcanoes. Over here in the top right hand corner, I click that button and then you name it. So let's say I'm just going to call it Volcano Wikipedia. I want it to save. It's saving. And then it will open it up when it's finished and here I have, I can go to my button, I can see all the different pages in this PDF document. And of course, all the same things work. I can double tap and it will read. The volcano is a rupture on the crust of the planetary mass objects, such as Earth. And click the stop button to stop it. So that's how you open up your PDF documents. Beside that is the annotation tool. I'm just going to go back to my PDF documents because I want to show my annotation tools in this book, the Divergent book. This book was downloaded for a student because they were comparing the Divergent play to the Divergent book. So again, going to that pencil, the annotation tools, we have quite a few different options for annotating our PDF. The first one in the top left corner is the highlighting tool. If you look over to the right, that purple dot, that's where you can choose what color you prefer your highlight to be and how dark or light it is. I choose to go lighter so that I can see the words underneath it clearly. So if the teacher maybe asked the question, what is Beatrice aptitude? And as the student's reading along, or as you the student are reading along, you can highlight when you come to the part that answers that question. And so I'm going to hold down where that part is and then drag so the blue covers and that's telling me this is what I'm going to be highlighting. And I pull off and wait, and you can see that my green highlight 
Beside the highlighting tool is the free text tool, which means I can add text to anywhere in my document. So I'm just going to click on the document and I'm going to type read for homework. Maybe I started reading this in class and I now I need to read the rest for homework. So I'm going to just put that note in there for myself. Also, the teacher could add things, you know, think about this is your reading and sort of drive the student's comprehension of the text. Beside the free text tool is a note. So if I click that, I can choose anywhere in my document to add a note. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to use dictation because many of my students use dictation to write a note for myself. Why does Beatrice have to keep the fact that she is divergent a secret? Question mark. So as you can see, it works beautifully with dictation. I just put in that note, you know, why does Beatrice have to keep the fact that she is divergent a secret? So, you know, as I'm reading, those are the things that are coming up in my mind. And now I can just click off and that note goes, so it doesn't go away, it stays on the page, but it clears so I can see the rest of my work. I'm going to click on the pencil tool, which is a drawing tool. And again, you can see on the right hand side, it gives me some choice of how I'd like my pen to look. I'm just going to make this a little darker. I'm also don't want any fill and I want to make it dark. So I don't want to be able to see through it. And I'm going to make it a little thinner of a line. I can see it changes at the top there to give me an idea. Done. Now I'm just going to circle on the page. You know, something that I felt was important that I want to bring my attention to. Beside the pencil tool is the drawing tool. And I believe you can see that little arrow beside it that there is an option for different shapes. There's a circle, a polygon, and a line tool. But for some reason on mine today, I'm only getting the rectangle as an option. So I'm going to just tap and drag my finger across to highlight something in a shape. The next icon is image, add an image. So I'm going to click on that. And you can either add an image from your camera or photo library. So I'm going to go into my photo library. I'm just going to move my picture to the side, make it a little smaller. Say here I got to, you know, where Beatrice was told and she had aptitude for abnegation, dauntless, and erudite. I just put down here the dauntless picture. I think she's going to choose to go dauntless. Excellent. After the image picture, we have the, the eraser. The eraser can erase any ink you have. It won't erase any notes or highlighting you've done, only any ink that you added to your page. Beside that is the select tool. And the select tool will select any annotations that you have added to your page. The next button is the clear page, which will clear all the annotations from my page. I don't want to do that right now because I want to show you how you can export those annotations. Now that we've finished annotating, if you look over, we see the gear. If you click on that, it has settings. So here's where we can change some of the settings in Claro. For example, the voice, the speech, how the word highlights. We've been doing word trail, but let's see what happens when we change that to sentence. The color of the highlight. Where we get our work from, you can see that we can also add Google Drive in there, and that we're using version 1.3.18. So that's for the settings. And then here in the store is where they have other Claro apps. As well, you can have add-on voices for Claro PDF. If we move across the top towards the right, we get that book icon. And we're just going to click on that. That's our bookmark. Here we see the annotations that we've added to our pages and they're labeled by page. So page one at the top, page three, page seven. If we click to the other side, we see the bookmarks where we've added a bookmark on that page. To add a bookmark, you simply hit the plus button in the top, bottom left corner and it's added in there for you. You can also edit them and delete any that you want.
Beside the bookmark and annotation is the save button. You can save the document as something else or you can save it back to Dropbox if that's where you took it from or where you hand it in for class. Beside that is the export button. There are multiple ways that you can export a PDF. You can use AirDrop, you can open it in a different app, you can print it, and you can email it. I just want to show you the email options because they're very unique. So first of all, it asks you what you want to email. Do you want to email just page eight that I'm working on today? So maybe I just want to email that, not all the 20 pages. And then it asks you if you want to email the embedded annotations. And I think that's really great. Um, I think as a teacher, it would be nice to have the embedded annotations. Plus, them send another email where you ignore the annotations so you can see the difference of what the student completed during that time. Then you just hit send and it kicks you into your email account where you can send the file where you need it to go. I'm just going to delete that draft because I'm not going to be sending mine today. Now that we move to the bottom of the screen, we see that magnifying glass, that's our search tool, so I can search, if I click it, I can search the document for any specific word. So if there's something I want to look up specifically, maybe I want to look for all the places that it says four, and you can see it quickly starts to pop up. And of course in this book four is a name as well as the number four, so you might have to determine that, but you can see it tells you what page it's on and in what sentence it's on. So if I click on that, it has highlighted, you know, where the word for is. Okay, it's going to go back to page eight. Excellent. So beside that tool is we see the page, I'm on page eight of 20. And as we talked about before, this arrow pointing to the left goes back pages and the arrow pointing to the right goes forward pages. Uh, the play button, as we talked about already, if I click on the address, she says, under no circumstances should you share that information with anyone. Then if I click the stop button, it stops. So you can see how the changes we made in settings were applied there as well. Okay, down here at the bottom right, we have where we can add multimedia to our document. I'm just going to click that. And you can see we have audio and video. So I'm first going to put some audio into this document. So here I'm going to add an audio note for myself. So I'm just going to click the record button, which is that circle. Ask the teacher what circumstances means. Hit the stop button when I'm done recording and you can see it pop up in my page, my audio that I inserted. So I'm just going to hit the play button there. Ask the teacher what circumstances means. So here you can put a the student can put a reminder to themselves or a teacher could add directions that they want the student to follow. I'm just going to hit done. The next you can add video. So you can either add video from your camera or from your library. So these would be videos that you make or that you've purchased or downloaded off of iTunes. The next button shows where I've added multimedia into my documents. So I can see on page three, seven, and eight, I have put some audio multimedia. And I'm just gonna hit done. And as we said before, this last one in the very bottom right corner shows me all my pages of my document. And you can see that it shows where things have been bookmarked so that I can easily go back to those. This is a great way to navigate through your document. You just click on the page that you want to go back to. I hope that this tutorial has helped you understand Claro PDF a little bit better. This tutorial is contributed by graduate students from the Assistive Technology Program at Simmons College.